One of the truly unique characteristics of photobiostimulation by deep penetrating photons is that they have the ability to actually promote and enhance healing, not just treat symptoms. The irradiation by therapeutic laser light accelerates and enhances healing activities carried out by the body. Several of the unique characteristics of laser therapy that work to alleviate pain and inflammation also play an important role in accelerating the healing process. The photostimulated mediated reduction in inflammation and pain frees the body's natural ability to repair and heal itself. As wound healing progresses through the stages of inflammation, proliferation, remodeling, and maturation, photon therapy presents the opportunity to impact each of these phases in positive and beneficial ways. Photobiostimulation increases the production of ATP. This increases the energy level of the cell to take up nutrients faster and get rid of waste byproduct faster increases the rate of cellular mitosis and collagen synthesis. It activates fibroblasts, chondrocytes, osteocytes, and other tissue repair cell types. These regenerative cells allow tendons, ligaments, bones, and muscles to heal at an accelerated rate. It accelerates tissue granulization and epithelialization of wounds. It stimulates the regeneration of peripheral nerves. It stimulates the remodeling of scar tissue. This is a summary slide demonstrating the laser-mediated effects of tissue healing. Primarily, the increased blood flow resulting from photobiostimulation causes, one, an increased leukocyte and macrophage infiltration, two, an increase in the vascular and early cell fibroblastic regeneration, three, an increased rate of cellular differentiation, four, an increased tensile strength to the tissues due to the injury healing with normal tissue cells instead of inelastic scar tissue. <clears throat> with these cellular events initiated by photobiostimulation, there is a reduction in the time from the onset of the injury to the final outcome of the mature healed wound. Deep penetrating photobiostimulation will significantly increase the formation of new capillaries and damaged tissue that speeds up the healing process, closes wounds faster, and reduces scar tissue. There is an acceleration of angiogenesis resulting in vasodilation which allows an increase in diameter of the blood vessels. The literature states that both blood capillaries and lymphatic capillaries have been clinically documented to undergo significant increase and regeneration in the presence of laser irradiation. The resulting improvement in circulation and perfusion enhances all repair and healing processes. Laser-induced increases in nitric oxide and the growth factors, in particular cytokine interferon gamma, INFG, are contributory to this process. Increased blood flow resulting from photobiostimulation can easily be visualized utilizing the ultrasound study with a Doppler. The upper image was done before laser therapy was applied to this anatomical area. After therapy was applied, one can visualize the increased vascularity to the tissues. The large red images on the lower image are blood vessels. If the increase in vascularity would have been the result of either thermal stimulation or lasers emitting only lower wavelengths at lesser powers, the vasculature would have been increased only superficially. The Doppler would have only depicted an N increase in the red images close to the dermis. Therefore, this is visual proof that photobiostimulation results in photobiochemical cascade of events within the cells that produces a therapeutic outcome. The increase in cellular metabolic activity from chromophore stimulation results in an increase in the production of ATP and other cellular enzymes. Photobiostimulation of the cell wall and plasma membrane of unhealthy cells changes the permeability of these structures and changing the rate of exchange. Photobiostimulation accelerates the healing process tremendously, replacing damaged tissue with normal cells, therefore not allowing the chance for inelastic scar tissue to form. In both soft tissues and connective tissue injuries, photobiostimulation can increase the final tensile strength and elasticity of the healed tissue. 
By increasing the amount of collagen production and synthesis, and by increasing the intra and intermolecular hydrogen bonding in the collagen molecules, laser therapy contributes to improve properties of the healed tissues. Nerve cells contain more mitochondria than any other cell in the body. Therefore, when exposed to photobiostimulation, the respiratory rate of these cells increases dramatically. Healthy nerve cells tend to operate at about negative 70 millivolts and fire at about negative 35 millivolts. Compromised cell membranes have a lowered threshold as their resting potentials and average around this negative 35 millivolt range. That means that normal, non-noxious activities produce pain. Photobiostimulation can have a pronounced pain blocking effect on afferent nerves. Laser irradiation suppresses the excitation of these fibers in the afferent sensory pathway. Photobiostimulation can help restore the action potential closer to the normal negative 70 millivolt range. Both compound muscle action potential, CMAP values, and nerve latency values have shown improvement with laser therapy in the literature. Simultaneously with angiogenesis, fibroblasts begin accumulating in the wound site. Fibroblasts are the cells that secrete the proteins that form collagen and elastic fibers and the substance between the cells of connective tissues. Fibroblasts begin entering the wound site two to five days after the incidence of the wound and as the inflammatory phase is ending and their numbers peak at one to two weeks post-incident. By the end of the first week, fibroblasts are the main cells in the wound. Fibroplasia ends two to four weeks later. In the first two or three days after injury, fibroblasts mainly proliferate and migrate, while later they are the main cells that lay down the collagen matrix in the wound site. Fibroblasts from normal tissue migrate into the wound area from its margins. Initially, fibroblasts use the fibrin scab formed in the inflammatory phase to migrate across, adhering to fibronectin. Fibroblasts then deposit ground substance into the wound bed and later collagen, which they can adhere to for migration. Therefore, the application of photon therapy allows, one, the stimulation to increase the number of fibroblasts produced, two, an anti-inflammatory effect to the surrounding tissues to accelerate the end of the inflammatory phase, three, increased circulation to the area to supply the nutrients for these rebuilding cells. Four, a stimulation to the mitochondria of these cells to increase their cellular energy levels. In addition to increasing the number of lymphocytes, laser irradiation mediates the action of both lymphatic helper T cells and suppressor T cells in the inflammatory response. Along with laser modification of B cell activity, the entire lymphatic response is beneficially affected by laser therapy. Photobiostimulation can be used instead of acupuncture needers, needles and other methods of point treatment. Laser puncture activates biochemical, functional and neurological processes similar to those of needle acupuncture and trigger point therapy. A combination of local therapy and systemic therapy such as laser puncture Trigger point stimulation and reflex point therapy is justified in almost each condition. The beneficial effects of this treatment pro protocol complement each other and are cumulative in effect.